In this video, we are going to evaluate limits at infinity. Let us begin with the basics. We know that if we have a variable x and if we were to plug a very large positive number in for x, our output will be a very large positive number. And if we were to plug in a very large negative number in for x, then our output would be a very large negative number. Thus, we know that the limit as x approaches positive infinity of x is equal to positive infinity, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x is equal to negative infinity. Now let us look at 1 over x. We know that if we plug in a very large positive number in the denominator, then the entire fraction will get smaller and smaller and smaller until it reaches zero. Similarly, if we were to plug in a very large negative number in the denominator, as this number gets larger and larger into the negative direction, it will eventually get closer and closer to zero. Thus, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 1 over x is equal to zero, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x is equal to zero. Now that we have covered the basics, let us move into our examples. We are going to take each one of these expressions to positive infinity and negative infinity. Be sure to watch the video until the very end because I will show you a shortcut for finding limits at infinity. For the first example, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 7x cubed over x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to observe the denominator and I am going to look for the highest power of x in the denominator. Clearly we have x cubed to be the highest power of x, so I will divide the numerator and the denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 7x cubed over x cubed divided by x cubed over x cubed minus 3x squared over x cubed plus 6x over x cubed, and this is going to equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 7 over 1 minus 3 over x plus 6 over x squared. So we just simplified the fractions of the numerator and the denominator. And so now we are able to apply the limit. I can use this analogy when the denominator of a fraction becomes very large, we know that the entire fraction will go to zero. So this is equal to seven over one minus zero plus zero, which is equal to seven over one, which is equal to seven. And if I were to take the same expression and let x go to negative infinity, then I can simply start right here because I would still go through the same procedure. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 7 over 1 minus 3 over x plus 6 over x squared Applying the limit here, we get that this is equal to 7 over 1 minus 
0 plus 0, which is equal to 7 over 1, which is equal to 7. Let us look at our next example. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of 10x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus 31 all over x to the sixth. So again, I want to look at the denominator and observe the highest degree. The highest degree is six. So we are going to divide the numerator and the denominator by x to the six. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 10 x to the fifth divided by x to the six plus x to the fourth divided by x to the 6 plus 31 divided by x to the 6 all over x to the 6 divided by x to the 6. And now we're just going to simplify all the fractions in the numerator and the denominator. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 10 over x plus 1 over x squared plus 31 over x to the 6 divided by 1. And now I'm just going to remove the 1 in the denominator. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 10 over x plus 1 over x squared plus 31 over x to the 6. And now we're simply going to plug in the limit. So this will equal to 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is equal to 0. And similarly, if I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity, I can simply just start here because I would go through the same procedure. So similarly, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 10 over x plus 1 over x squared plus 31 over x to the 6. And that will give me 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is equal to 0. Because again, we are using these two analogies where the denominator grows much faster than the numerator. So we will have a limit of 0 as x approaches positive or negative infinity. For the last example, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x to the 7th plus 5x minus 1 all over negative 6x cubed minus 7x plus 3. Again, we want to divide the numerator and the denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. The highest power of x in the denominator is x cubed. So we have that this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x to the 7th over x cubed plus 5x over x cubed minus 1 over x cubed divided by negative 6 x cubed over x cubed minus 7x over x cubed plus 3 over x cubed. And reducing our fractions, we have that this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x to the fourth plus 5 over x squared 
minus one over x cubed divided by negative six minus seven x squared plus three over x cubed. Now this part is where it gets a little tricky. So I'm going to be sure to write everything out so you can see everything clearly. So when I apply the limit here, I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in here. So I'm gonna say three times positive infinity raised to the fourth power plus, and of course, when I plug a very large number into the denominator here, and here, then we know that the entire fraction goes to zero. So we have zero minus zero all over negative six minus zero plus zero. So that's going to give me three times positive infinity raised to the fourth power over negative six. We see that we used both the first and the third analogy where you plug in a very large number in for x and your output will give you a positive infinity and that's what we did here. We put a very large number in for x and my output was a positive infinity. And for the third analogy, when a very large number is in the denominator, the entire fraction goes to zero, and that is why we have zero here. So here is the tricky part. Now, we know that three times infinity raised to the fourth power is infinity, so that's okay. So we have infinity over negative six, but you have to be careful here because a positive number divided by a negative number is a negative number. So we know that this comes to a negative infinity. Similarly, if I were to take the expression to negative infinity, how about I start right here because we would go through the same procedure up to here. So if I were to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 3x to the fourth plus 5 over x squared minus 1 over x cubed all over negative 6 minus 7 over x squared plus 3 over x cubed. And again, I'm taking negative infinity and plugging it into the variable x. And this time we are using the second and the fourth analogy. So for the second, I'm plugging it into x to the fourth. So this is equal to three times negative infinity raised to the fourth power plus zero minus zero all over negative six minus zero plus zero, which is three times negative infinity raised to the fourth power over negative six. Now you want to be careful here because you have negative infinity raised to an even power. So that is going to give you a positive infinity. If you were to have negative infinity raised to an odd power, then you would get a negative infinity. So we're going to replace this with a positive infinity because we have an even power. So this is going to give me a positive infinity over a negative six because three times a positive infinity is just positive infinity, right? And now we, again, we have a positive number divided by a negative number, so our result will be a negative number. So this is equal to negative infinity. Now let me give you a cool shortcut. Look at the first example. Notice that the degree of the denominator is equal to the degree of the numerator. So my result will be the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. 
So the leading coefficient of the numerator is 7, and the leading coefficient of the denominator is 1. And this is true when you take the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Now let's look at the second example. Notice that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So when you take the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity, what you're always going to get is zero for both positive and negative infinity. And last, notice that the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So what you will get as x approaches positive or negative infinity would be either positive or negative infinity. This depends on a few things. First, it would depend on whether the leading coefficients of the numerator and the denominator are positive or negative, and it will depend on whether or not the powers of x are even or odd after dividing the numerator and the denominator by the highest power of x of the denominator. Keep in mind that if you are given the first or the second example, you could jump straight to the answer just by looking at it. However, if you're given a situation where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then you may want to go through the steps to avoid any chances of error. And that is how you evaluate limits at infinity. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.